I get it, man. I, I get it. I do. It's just not healthy. I mean, you just got to let her go. I think of it this way. You can stroll down the road anytime and you can look up and you can see that light and you can know she's there. She's thinking of you and you can hang on to that, man. You can, that light, that's for her. You don't understand. You don't understand because it's not just about the light. It's about what the light represents. The light is her. The light is, lets me know that she's always there when, it's always there when I need it, okay? The light is there for me and I can go to it for what I need. Welcome to Shrimp Cover Lid, I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here with this week's book review. Dalton, what is it? This is a good one. I think it's going to be great. I'm excited. First time I've ever read it. This is The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Okay. High school literature that you didn't read, but you should have. The stigma of required reading. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, tell me good, tell me bad. Let's get started with this. Three good things. If you read it quick, it's entertaining. If you read it slow, wow is it deep. Uh, Gatsby, the man, is just so damned interesting that there's not enough of him in the book, and that's a good way to be. Okay. Um, this novel is a wonderful example of how simple can be breathtaking. Okay. Uh, my three points I have here, and we talked about this one a little bit, this book is a painting. Fitzgerald uses colors to set up the scenery, and colors are representations of characters, emotions, and everything. This is painting with a palette in creating literature. It's amazing. Uh, the character of Daisy is supposed to be the love interest of this piece. She's supposed to be this great, wonderful woman that Gatsby himself has fallen for, and she's awful. She's absolutely awful, and I love to hate her. The ending to this piece is wonderful. Everything is finished, everything is summed up perfectly, and it's just perfect. And that's just a quick point with that. With this era of writing, that's one of the things that you don't always get, right? Yes. You have stories that feel like they stop, not end. So to have one that actually ends, it's very well done. Uh, three bad things. Uh, I didn't finish this novel until the fourth time I tried to read it, twice in high school, once in college, and I finished it on my own. Uh, and like I said, part of that is the stigma of required reading. Um, Nick Carraway is a dead fish handshake uh, as a main character. I hate to bring up uh, past memories from the show and, and cross literary examples, but uh, Tobey Maguire was just about perfect casting, right? Yes. Uh, yes. And I, I think, ironically, most of the reason this book is so tempting to Hollywood is that that character feels like a camera. Okay. Um, and finally, when you finish Gatsby, it feels short, not brief, but complete, like Animal Farm or Of Mice and Men or The Old Man and the Sea, all of which we've done uh, videos for, by the way. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, my bad things. Uh, this is a very confusing novel to start. The first chapter of this is pretty painful which is unfortunate because I think that turns a lot of people away from reading the greatness that comes after that. Uh, the dialogue can be really, really repetitive, especially with Gatsby calling everyone old sport every five seconds drives me insane. And you will never read this novel unless you actually want to. Okay. I, I think that's it. maybe that's, again, you said the stigma of required reading. Right. Uh, or it's just the fact that nobody knows what Great Gatsby's about. And they're like, oh, it's supposed to be good. I don't right. need to read it. Quotes? You got yes, quotes? Yes, yes. Quotes are great. Um, and here's the thing that I tried to do. There's a lot of great quotes in here. So what I tried to do was I tried to find um, where Fitzgerald is explaining a character. Because they're not descriptions, they're explanations. Okay. So on Tom, from six, we get the, the little quip. Tom would drift on forever seeking a little wistfully for the dramatic turbulence of some irrecoverable football game. On seven... Describing his, his character, explaining his character, I'm sorry. It was a body capable of enormous leverage, a cruel body. It, on page nine, an explanation of Daisy. I've heard it said that Daisy's murmur was only to make people lean toward her, an irrelevant criticism that made it no less charming. Uh, I mean, these descriptions are just legendary. Yes. On page two, of Gatsby, 
He says Gatsby dot, 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 has some heightened sensitivity to the promises of life as if he were related to one of those intricate machines that register earthquakes 10,000 miles away. Um, this is not, he was five foot nine and hairy. Um, there's an indescript, an indirect description of Nick's character on 43 when he's at that party, that small party with the mistress. Yes. You don't know, you don't know who we are, said one of those girls in yellow. But we met here about a month ago. Oh no, this is, I'm sorry, this isn't, this is from, this is Jordan. You don't know who we are, said one of the girls in yellow. But we met you here about a month ago. You've dyed your hair since then, remarked Jordan. Jordan is much, this tells us that Jordan is much quicker and much more intelligent than she lets on, right? And that again, that, that's that use of color. Yes. There is so much in there that makes that a yes. passionate living piece. Uh, and it's so simple. Jimmy. It is. Yeah. Uh, speaking of you know, using the painting, I have this one, page 120. Uh, her voice is full of money, he said suddenly, and that was it. I'd never understood before it was full of money. That was the inexhaustible charm that rose, that rose and fell in it. And the jingle of it, the symbol song of it, high in a white palace, the king's daughter, the golden girl. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, and I also have this one, which I think really highlights Daisy and the off relationship between Daisy and Gatsby. It's that passionate love for some imaginable, unachievable thing. Daisy is not what Gatsby wants. Daisy is the image of what Gatsby thinks he wants. Exactly. Uh, he talked a lot about the past, and I gather that he wanted to recover something, some idea of himself, perhaps, that had gone, on, gone into loving Daisy. His life had been confused and disordered since then, but if he could once return to a certain starting place and go over it all slowly, he could find out uh, he could find out that thing, what that thing was. Excuse me, I can't read today. Right. Uh, just wonderful, wonderful writing. And since you didn't mention it, I, I held this back in case you were going to mention it. The very last line of this novel, page 180, after everything has happened, after all, all of the, the chaos is blown over and the trash is settled, so we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. I mean, that's an all-timer of a last line. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, so what can we say about this? Because there's a lot we could really be talking on. You know, the first thing I want to get off my chest is, I don't know if anyone knew this, but The Great Gatsby was actually the first Bret Easton Ellis novel. Oh, is that that's yeah. the way it is? Um, there's no likable characters in here. Okay. okay. Uh, there, there are characters that you cannot look away from, but they are not likable. I think... Uh, in the beginning, the reader develops a like for Gatsby, but once we actually see who Gatsby really is, that, that's taken away. He's just a man. Well, here, here's one of the things I tried to do um, in reading this again is I tried to do what modern readers have done with the Bible. Okay. Where you look at things very literally and you try to extrapolate meaning from the actual text that is not that is implicitly implied but is not directly there um and one of the things is with gatsby you know you mentioned him as is very interesting but you have to realize what this man is in today's equivalent gatsby is a coke dealer right yes he is a very dangerous person yes and there's all of those um uh, they're constantly questioning what Gatsby does, right. where Gatsby's come from. And when they're at that party, the, the very first time Nick goes to one of his parties, there's all these people saying, oh, I bet he's killed a man. I bet he's killed yeah. a man. Yeah, I bet Gatsby has. Yes. Uh, to, to, get, to get to where he has as a bootlegger and fixing horse racing, which is where the end goes, which, you know, in high school, I, I didn't understand. Yeah, that's right? a big deal, though, especially in the 20s. That's a huge deal. Yes. But Gatsby is that, uh, for lack of better words, that charming bad boy persona. He's got it all because he's made it himself. And he's a dangerous man, but he's an interesting man. And we want to love him because of that, uh, that draw towards that interest. Here's something to bring up, though, along those lines. He is the dangerous man, obviously. With the way he's made his money, he's dangerous, but in today's world, when that dangerous man made his money that way, he makes sure that people know it, right? That's not this character. Gatsby never plays that up. 
Gatsby never even mentions correct, it. Correct. I, I think there is some extravagance behind Gatsby. I mean, obviously he's throwing these parties, and we do come to realize that they are to attract Daisy. But he's he's throwing his money around. He's throwing his money around, but not. But he's not addressing where it came from. He's or throwing who he is. Yes, he is also he's throwing around his money and a persona. Yes, he is not throwing around Gatsby the man. And you see that there are, there are small parts of this novel where the facade breaks, where Nick has Daisy over. Yes. And Gatsby loses his mind. So here's my next question for you: Is there a real character in here? Because every character is a personification of something. Gatsy puts on an image. Daisy puts on the image to reflect whatever man she's with. Yes. I think that Nick is a real character. Okay. And the reason you can say that is because we get it in here. Nick comes from basically the Midwest. Yes. And he doesn't know that all of these people are images. And that's one of those things that when you read into the novel as opposed to simply reading the novel, comes out. Okay. Right? He doesn't understand that you have to put on this face to live, to live in this society. He's got the small house, which is very representative of his ideas about things. Right? Okay. He just came out there to make some money. Exactly. And then he's thrown into all this, hoist upon Going the scenario. Um, I, I want, since we're on the, on the question right. of Gatsby, I'd like to bring this up real quick. You've got that quote on page one. <laughs> page one. Page one, before we ever meet Gatsby. Um, and it's very easy not to come back to this quote. This is the first time I ever did. Because it's something that stands out. And you say, oh, well, that's going to come up later. And it never directly does. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. Who's that about? It, it, was, it was Nick's father talking Nick's father to him. Nick's father talking to him. Who I, is I that know. quote about? That quote's about Gatsby. You think so? Gatsby didn't have everything that you had. Gatsby okay. had. Gatsby came from, um, from nothing. Yes. Built himself. Self-made man. To do that, you have to partake in some dangerous play. Uh, I think that's very much the implication that's being made there. Uh, now I'd like to talk a little bit about Fitzgerald. Okay. Uh, because everyone's heard the name F. Scott Fitzgerald. They know who he is, but not a lot of people have sat down and read him because he didn't. He wasn't. He was a great author, but he didn't produce a lot of works before the end of his life. Right. So there's, Died of a heart a limited, attack. there's a limited number of what you can read. And it seems like everybody's either read The Great Gatsby in high school, which they didn't care about at that point in time, or they read Bernice Bob's Her Hair, which is absolutely awful. It was just a piece of the times. F. Scott Fitzgerald is The Great Gatsby. Daisy is Zelda Fitzgerald. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. Scott was so in love with Zelda and the idea of Zelda that it pretty much killed him. No, no, no. I and he was so passionately in love with Zelda, shut up, Ernest, that his friends didn't really care for her and pushed against him because he loved this idea of Zelda. And Zelda herself, much like Daisy, was a train wreck. An absolute okay. train wreck. So while we're on the question of persona versus individual, okay. um, F. Scott Fitzgerald, the man, is Nick Carraway. You think so? Absolutely. All right. Read anything about F. Scott Fitzgerald, the man. He's Nick Carraway. He's, he's the wet fish handshake. Uh, the persona that he thought he was might be Gatsby. Might be Gatsby. And that's the thing. Zelda and Scott were notorious for throwing extravagant parties. So this, there's a lot of Fitzgerald in this piece. A lot of Fitzgerald. Here's the thing. Since Fitzgerald is in this piece, is Hemingway as well? Is Tom Hemingway? Uh, that's a dangerous route to take. The enormous, brutal man. It, it could the be. The womanizer. The womanizer. The man who, who's, who steps into the room figuring it's his. I got this. This is mine. Right? Could be so. That's Hemingway. Could be so. He's even painted that way. Uh, not just physically, but the way that he manipulates is that, that strong man that Hemingway was, and it is coarse and fine and true, right? Okay. He's Hemingway. Um, anything else along those lines? I don't know. I, it, it, this is a very difficult piece to read because there's so much projected onto different characters. And I could agree with you that Fitzgerald the man could have been Carraway. But the projection of who Fitzgerald wanted to be and thought he was was Gatsby. Okay. For sure. And Zelda is Daisy. There is no arguing that. I will not give that one up. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, no, no. I, so, I think you're absolutely right there. But I could also give you the Hemingway one as well. I mean, that, that's... It's really hard to make that assumption 
but the clues are there. Let me ask you this. I think as the best thing about this novel is it's a time capsule of America, of Americana. Yes. yes. So let me ask you this. Um, how long before this book was published was Of Mice and Men published? I am not sure on top of my head. Don't, don't, just think about it. It doesn't matter the dates. I would assume... How much older is Of Mice and Men than this book? I would assume 20 years older almost. So, ballpark, what do you think, when do you think this novel was published? Early 20s. When do you think Of Mice and Men was published? It reads like it would have been early 1900s. About 1900. Okay, Of Mice and Men was published in 1937. Gatsby was published in 1925. Okay. So, this is the older novel. Yes. Why does it feel that way? The Great Depression. Well, The Great Depression and Of Mice and Men is a Western novel. Okay. okay. This is an Eastern novel, which is very much the implication of East Egg versus West Egg, right? Yes, it's very different. East Egg is old money, West Egg is new money. Okay. Eastern part of the United States is older than the West. And at that point in time, I mean, there there is a difference now between East and West Coast, for sure, in the United States. Uh, at that point in time, that difference was so much more prominent. Enormous. Enormous. So it, it is really interesting that you brought that up. They do read almost completely different, given there were only about 10 years in between them. Yeah, um, and the wrong one was older. Right. Yes, it's, uh, that's the way it feels, <laughs> for sure. Um, uh, what I found is interesting is Caraway is going to this to make a name for himself, to make money, to get into this whole financial this system here. Which is sort of the reason that uh, Fitzgerald wrote the book. Yes. This was pre-depression. This was before the stock market crash. This was before the big boom. This was the Roaring Twenties. And I think Fitzgerald predicted it. He knew it was coming. Okay, you're going to have to defend so. that. You, you, don't, you don't agree with me? No, I don't agree with uh, you. There are portions in this novel where they're talking about uh, the, the party finances. has to end. Yes, the party has to end. I think he knew it was coming. <sighs> I think that's, I think setting out F. Scott Fitzgerald as being a prophet uh, is, no, is a I, bit I, much. I would like to think that old Scott is the prophet, the <laughs> Nostradamus of the literary world. Uh, now, did you, you said you read this in high school, or you at least attempted to. Right. This is often assigned in a lot of high schools. Yes. Do you think this novel would have meant more to you then, or meant more to you now? Absolutely now, because I think that this... One of the unfortunate things about this novel is that it is very literati, yes. right? Uh, if you are not a practiced reader, you're not going to get as much out of it. You might still like it. It might still be good to you. But the depth that's there definitely pays off more with a higher level of readership. Uh, I do not know why, considering how big young adult is, there isn't more young adult being taught in high schools. Okay. Is it fair for me to bring that up? I think so. I'm not sure where you're going with it. but I, I think that's completely fair. Um, I don't think I could have enjoyed this piece at a younger age. I think you would have lost a lot of the tension between Gatsby and Daisy and saw it as more as just a base relationship. I don't think you would have understood the struggle of Gatsby. Right. Uh, I, there is a lot of good wisdom in this piece. But Fitzgerald was quite young when he wrote this, wasn't he? Do you know he would have been, age? I believe, 30s? Very young to be dealing with some of these heavy subjects that he's pushing out here. So I think that is an absolute credit to the man as the author. Okay. Uh, just plugging that, mainly because I have found out recently that I am in love with the idea of F. Scott Fitzgerald. We've always had this joking banter that you might be Hemingway, I might be Fitzgerald, but now that I've gone through the Gatsby, oh my. There is a quote from Mark Twain. And I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to nail it. But he says something about the American author has written all of his most important works by the age of 35. You think so? I don't know. I hope I don't think so. <laughs> I'm 30 right now. I got. I only got five years. If that's the case, um, anything else to bring up? I've got. I've got tons. Yeah, lay something on me. Give me um, here's here's a quote from page 95. Okay. In the morning, in the evening, ain't we got fun? One thing sure and nothing is sure, the rich get rich and the poor get children. In the meantime, the in-between time, it's a quote from a song, right? Okay. These are song lyrics, right? How many times before this book 
had song lyrics, lyrics, song lyrics appeared in books. Uh, that is an interesting point. That might be an, have been very innovative at the time. I, yeah, uh, I, it, it, it's hard for me to say, but now is as, this the first time? It could have been. As a reader of modern science fiction, uh, anytime you get a song, a poem, or something in a novel, I usually gloss over it. Really? Yes. Why is it in there? In modern science fiction, my opinion is it's in there for ambiance. It sets up a background of this world that's been created. Because okay. it's usually a ballad about something that happened thousands of years ago in this fantasy setting. Excuse me, I use science fiction and fantasy way too much interchangeably. But fantasy. However, this is important. Yeah. This sets up the piece. And that may have been where this, the intentions were with something like this. But I think now it's kind of off the wall, where you can just toss in a song lyric or something just for fluff. I would encourage you never to gloss over it in literary fiction. I because think Because yes. in, in literary fiction, it's definitely in there yes. for a reason. I agree wholeheartedly. And if you might note, again, uh, just pushing my idea of painting, I sat and highlighted all the colors. Really? Every, because that is what it is. Did you do it in different colors? No, absolutely Damn it. not. It was a uh, neutral yellow. <laughs> Uh, but that is a big part of this piece, is the glowing light, the green light. Yeah. Which he knew was daisy. Green is go, green is money. Green. <laughs> right? It, correct. Green is correct. go, green is money. Um, was this before traffic lights, I'm imagining? Oh. So green might not have been go yet. But green was money. Green was definitely money. Um, what else have you got? Well, what do you got? You said you've got a list of things that you want to well, hammer. Myrtle was struck on Gatsby's side of the car. Did you notice that? She okay. was struck by the passenger side. Gatsby was in the passenger seat as Daisy was being Daisy. What does this, what does this suggest? I would assume she would have swerved. Is that what you're getting at there? No, it, it suggests that, that um, Myrtle and Gatsby are the same character. Okay. They are in these female, these failed romances. All right. And they are the person who is being used by Tom slash Daisy and the person who is now drawing ire from the other. Okay. And they're both dead at yes. that point. Yes. At that point, they're both gone. I, I think it's very uh, Hemingwayan how Gatsby handles this situation, though. Because, I, you know, it's always, it's that lost generation. You know these guys sat around together, and these women, uh, and they talked about their novels, and they probably worked with each other. Uh, it's very Hemingwayan, in my opinion, that at the end Gatsby says, well, you know, man's got to do what man's got to do. I'm not going to let my love take the fall for this. I'll take the hit. Yeah. So very much of Hemingway, and very different, in my opinion, from the rest of the novel. Really? I think it, it's, it's, a, it's a major change in Gatsby. Because Gatsby has always done what had to have been done. Correct, yes. But this is the first time where Gatsby is doing something for someone else. He's not growing his wealth. He's not trying to, you know, create a love interest for himself. He's taken the fall. He's taken the fall for someone. I don't know that I agree because at the same time, he does take the back roads to get home. He does hide the car in the garage. He knows that eventually they'll be there, but he thinks that by that time he'll have a plan. Okay. All right. Um, I, I think that he's he's the great he's the schemer he's the planner. Now there is some kind of significance here, and I hope you can tie it together for me to the pool. Because again, with this painting that I'm pushing at here, when things are great, when the party's happening, when things are go, it's lively, it's colorful, it's great. When things are bad in this novel, it's gray and it's raining. And it was the first time that he'd used that pool. The first time he'd used the pool. He personally had never been in it. Never been in it, and that's where he died. Well, I, and I think it's, it's important, again, to bring up a biblical reference. This is baptism, right? Okay. Every time that is raining on Gatsby, he has to assume the role of, of the man, right? He has to be the hero, or he's literally going through hell. Yes. I mean, imagine, imagine what's... What was going through Gatsby's mind when he was shot? He was suffering. Um, also, we start the novel, I believe, in the winter? The, the, I... the spring. I think it's spring. Okay. Um, the heat of the novel happens in the summer. And what is happening when Gatsby gets shot? He says, don't drain the pool. I want to use it. 
When do you drain the pool? You drain the pool right before winter. Right, right before, before fall. Things, right before fall, when things get cold. Yeah. Okay. So he's dead in the fall. Okay. Gets everything, everything pays off. Pop. It's gone. Gone. He bloomed and it was over. Yes. Fair enough. Um, here, I want to talk about this quote from page 108. Okay. Daisy began to sing the music in a husky rhythmic whisper, bringing out a meaning in each word that it had never had before and would never have again. When the melody rose, her voice broke up sweetly, following it in a way contralto voices have, and each change tipped out a little of her warm human magic upon the air. Is this or is this not a very good representation and quote to illustrate what it is that literature does with its rereadability? Okay. We make we make a, a big deal often on Hemingway about how different each of his pieces are when they are read and reread, because you're in a different place. Yes. This is a place where she's fighting with Tom, and she's singing a happy song. So what do those words mean? Those words there are a betrayal of Tom saying, "I'm still thinking of Gatsby." Okay. That husky voice saying, "You can shove off, sailor, because <laughs> I've got a different future planned." Oh, uh, I hope that becomes a thing. People are just going to use that quote now. You can shove off, sailor. You've never heard that before? No, no, I, it was just delightful to hear it coming from you. Uh, that, that is an interesting point, and we do always talk about the readability and how things change over time for the characters, and that is a change in Daisy that we see. It absolutely is. That is absolutely a change. So if you enjoyed The Great Gatsby, Adrian, what would you read next? Um... Less Than Zero okay. by Brett Easton Ellis. All right. Uh, it's, a, it's a book about parties and the darkness that goes into being part of that lifestyle. Okay. Uh, I would say if you are into F. Scott Fitzgerald and The Great Gatsby, you need to seek out more from The Lost Generation. You need to find more Hemingway. You need to read Stein. You need to figure out who Ezra Pound is. Yeah. Uh, because that is this. This is style of novel. It all was great. Uh, yeah, the expatriates were, once you look into them, you, you might not look anywhere else in literature. Yes. What would you rate this? 93 green lights out of 100. 95. I'm upping you. Yep this is me. one of the favorite books that I have read since we started this channel. Really? So, yes, I absolutely loved it. Okay. Uh, and maybe I'm just in love. Maybe Fitzgerald is my daisy. So. Possibly. Quite possibly so. Probably because you're every bit the hipster that... Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald hoped to be. That's what I'm here for. Uh, so if you like this kind of nonsense, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. and Leave us a comment as to what you think about The Great Gatsby. A lot of people read this. What does that green light mean to you? What does that green light mean to me? I, now I'm going to go into like an existentialist crisis. <laughs> Thank you for that. Leave it in the comments. Leave it in the comments down below. You'll see my demise.